everybody. Uh, good afternoon. <laughs> that was awkward. <laughs> I, my name is Amy. I'm the Globetrotting Stitcher. Um, welcome to my Floss 2 channel. I'm so happy that you found us and that you're here today. Today is Monday, January the 3rd, 2022. So happy new year. Welcome to 2022 to all of you. We made it through 2021. Um, and so we're really glad to be back with you again today. Um, it has been a wild one so far today. We are having some crazy weather in the Pacific Northwest. Um, just in the last hour alone, we went from a pretty crazy hailstorm um, on to rain and then to snow that was like flying sideways and now it seems to have calmed down a bit, but we'll see what else the day holds for us. Um, we've had some really crazy weather overall this last week, but more on that in a few minutes. Um, I did want to just start the video by taking a few minutes or a moment or two to say thank you to, to all of you. So many of you left kind comments on our last video, um, both just your very sweet holiday wishes, which of course we really appreciated, um, but also um, just your very kind remarks on uh, me sharing what, was, what, what, what we've been going through in our family and some of the losses that we've had as we've gone through the holiday season. And so um, just thank you for your kindness. Uh, I, you know, I think one of the things that we hear so much in this community is how much people care for one another and how kind people are to one another in this this wonderful little um, stitchy community. And I certainly felt that over um, in reading your comments. So thank you so much to everybody for those. Um, so I think hopefully just a, a few quick updates on what we've been up to since the last time we were with you. Um, which wasn't too long ago, but you know, when it's the holidays, a lot of stuff happens. So obviously we had Christmas and New Year's. Um, and so as we were heading into Christmas, you know, I've, I've told you all about, um, I'm the family baker. And so, um, I did have my big baking day, actually two baking days really. So I have one day where, um, I make the caramels and the candies and Gary helps me with that process. And then I have another whole day that I spend making the cookies. And so this year, I think we had 10 different flavors of cookies, um, something along those lines. I'd have to go back and look at the list, but it was a long, long day of baking. And then another couple of hours of um, getting everything tinned up and packaged up to share with friends and family. So thankfully we got most of the sweets out of the house um, and, and out of the danger zone where we were tempted to eat too much. We still ate more than we should have, but, um, but thankfully we were able to get rid of most of it. So, um, so that was fun. We had a really lovely Christmas. Um, so Christmas Eve we spent with my family and that's always a fun time. Um, and then Christmas morning, Gary, um, my folks were coming over Christmas day. So I, I stayed home to kind of get things ready for them to arrive. Um, but Gary and his son went up to see his mom. And so those of you who've been watching us for the last several months know that Gary was stitching um, that beautiful design called To Market by Hannah's Needlecraft. And in our last update, we showed you the fully finished and framed version of that. And so that was a, a Christmas gift for Gary's mom. And so he took that up to her uh, Christmas morning. And I think she wasn't quite sure what to make of it when she first opened it. And when she realized that Gary had stitched it and that it was a handcrafted piece of art, um, I think she really began to appreciate the work and the, the workmanship and just the beauty of what he had done. And I think she's really, really enjoying it. So, um, so that made it to its new home. And I think it's going to be really well loved there. Um, other than that, yeah, we had a, we had a, quieter but nice Christmas. It was it was quite fun. Um, like I said, my folks came over and had dinner with us Christmas afternoon. Um, and we had, uh, we tried something new that we've never done before. So um, our British viewers are very familiar with Christmas crackers. Christmas crackers, uh, that's, a, that's a very British tradition at the holidays. And um, I, um, I work with a lovely British woman who happened to be back in Seattle very briefly at the beginning of December, and she had brought me some Christmas crackers um, as a gift. And so I thought, well, how fun would it be to, to bust those out during our family Christmas dinner? And so we did that. And for those of you who are um, not familiar with Christmas crackers, it's like a little wrapped cylinder with kind of, um, you pull the ends apart and it makes a big popping noise. 
Um, and then depending on the cracker, you know, it might have like poems or jokes or riddles or things like that inside. Um, I know some of them have like paper crowns. And so a lot of times you'll see um, TV shows or movies where at Christmas, the British people are wearing like their paper crowns. So a lot of times those will come in Christmas crackers. Ours had some funny jokes and, and um, tongue twisters in there. And so we really enjoyed that. Um, and we actually had so much fun telling the terrible jokes <laughs> to each other that were in the crackers that I think we're going to continue the, tra the tradition in future Christmases. Um, but for those of you who are from the UK and that, um, that crackers are a part of your annual tradition, you'll have, I think, probably a good laugh at my expense because I had um, a very American interpretation of what Christmas crackers were until we actually did them. Um, so in, the, in, in American English, crackers are like what the British folks would consider to be like a savory biscuit. Um, and, you know, so it's a snack. And in, um, <laughs> yeah, it's a snack. And, um, and in British English, obviously crackers is more like a firecracker. And so literally up until the first person opened their cracker, I was expecting like little savory biscuits to come out of these packages and there are no biscuits to be found. And I very quickly learned how mistaken I was. Um, so it was kind of a fun surprise, but yeah, we really enjoyed that. Um, Anyway, the, the day after Christmas, so like I said, we had a lovely Christmas. Day after Christmas, actually Christmas night, we started getting snow. Um, and it's, it's not typical for us to get a lot of snow here in the winter at any time, but especially around Christmas, if we're going to get it, it's usually later in the winter. It's snowing right now. It's snowing right now. Um, and so Christmas night, it started snowing. It snowed through the night. And when we woke up the morning after Christmas, we were snowed in. Uh, we had four or five inches of snow on the ground. Um, and so, it, and then again, if it does snow here, it's usually a small accumulation and it melts off really quickly. And so you don't usually have more than a day uh, at most where you're kind of prevented from getting out of the house. And a lot of times you can get out of the house later in the afternoon because it will melt off. But our temperatures just plummeted. So we had this pretty large, pretty significant accumulation of snow. And then the temperatures just dropped. Um, and so we spent most of this last week below freezing. Um, so our, our daytime highs were in the low 20s. Um, so for those of you who are on Celsius, that would be like negative four, negative four. No, negative four or negative five. And then the, the nighttime lows got down into the teens. So like negative 10, negative nine kind of degrees Celsius. So really, really cold. We had a number of folks locally that I was seeing on our, our community Facebook page, their pipes were freezing and like breaking. And it was a real problem because we don't, because we don't have those kind of more extreme cold temperatures, we don't tend to have as the insulation isn't as good on our pipes. They're not buried as deeply as they are in, in parts of the country that are used to colder temperatures. And so um, it was really brutally cold. And then midweek, we got more snow on top of what we already had. So we've been kind of housebound up until yesterday when, when it started to warm up and things started to melt out. Um, but it made for a, a nice quiet week between Christmas and New Year's. Um, Gary and I, we had a nice quiet New Year's at home here with the dogs. It was just the two of, well, just the four of us. Normally we have a, a big New Year's Eve party and we had decided to postpone that this year, not to do it um, again, because with the, the new variant going around, we just didn't want to risk it. So um, so it was just the two of us and, and with all the snow, it probably wouldn't have been safe for folks to come over anyway. So that's kind of what our holidays have been like. Um, the dogs love snow. So Bear and Sophie over the last week have gotten a lot of really fun romps in the snow and they've enjoyed that quite a bit. Um, but I will look forward to walking them in warmer temperatures now that things are starting to, to get more into our typical range. Um, other than that, kind of being housebound and off work gave me an opportunity over the last week to do a little bit of organizing and kitting up. So I have kitted up most of the projects that I'm planning to start in 2022. And that was really fun to kind of make some decisions and get those things ready to go and in project bags. And, and so that I'm looking forward to um, and looking forward to sharing all of those with you throughout the year as I start them. 
And then I've also been doing some kind of reorganizing of my crafting spaces. Um, so a little bit more about that later, but um, I don't have a crafting room. And so I tend to kind of stash little bits and pieces of things. You know, there's some things in the buffet in the dining room and some things in the, the linen closet and some things in the, the bedroom closet. And there's just, whenever I'm gonna do some crafting, um, I kind of go here and there and everywhere to kind of pull all the pieces that I need together. And so I did a little bit of um, reorganizing of some spaces and I think I'm gonna have a little bit more of efficient uh, storage going forward. So I'm looking forward to that this next year. So anyway, I think that's enough of an update for now, a little bit more than usual. Um, let's get into some of the stitchy stuff. So we have had, um, I've had a couple of finishes. Uh, one is an uh, FFO, a fully finished object that I'm gonna share with you. And then another is just a finished piece. So we'll start with the FFO. Um, so those of you who are regularly uh, visiting with us might remember that a few months ago, um, early in the fall, I started working on spring delivery by Plum Street Samplers. Uh, this design is stitched on a piece of 30, 36 count sand Edinburgh linen. Um, and you might remember that when I was stitching this, I told you it was just true comfort stitching. I literally enjoyed every second that I spent on this. It was so much fun. And so um, I was able to get it fully framed. I uh, had a custom, I ordered a custom frame for it from Custom Frame Solutions, and this is how it turned out. So um, yeah, I'm just really pleased with this. I am loving it. I think it, it looks great in the frame. I definitely went with a little bit more of a distressed kind of look. And um, I am gravitating back toward, I, so this one I framed using the, um, the lacing method rather than the pinning. Um, and I'm, I'm finding that I'm gravitating more back toward that. I've been pinning for a while now and, and had to do lacing on another project. And I'm finding that I'm actually enjoying using lacing and I'm getting better results personally. Um, so I'm doing a little bit more of that, but at any rate, this is how it turned out. I'm so, so pleased with it. I think it's adorable and I'm really looking forward to bringing it out, um, later this year in the spring and putting it on display. So this is spring delivery by Plum Street Samplers. The other piece I have to share with you is just finished. It's not fully finished. And um, over Christmas week, I worked on Honey Fields by Filigram. I stitched this on a piece of 36, 30, oh, 32 count Chase Scape Lugana by Silk Weaver using their DMC conversion. Um, and the last time you saw it, I was probably about halfway done. I had worked on it also Thanksgiving week and hadn't gotten quite as far as I wanted to. And I was beginning to have doubts as we were going through Christmas week, whether I would get it finished just because Christmas week is always such a busy week. Um, and so with all the things that you're pre prepping for and all the celebration, you don't always have much stitching time, but I did manage to get this finished the day after Christmas. Um, and so this is how it turned out. Um, I really, really love this. I'm really satisfied with how it turned out. I think the colors are great. It's nice and summery. Um, so yeah, uh, very, very pleased with this. The one thing I did change, I changed a couple of minor things on this. Um, I did change out the color in the blue flowers. It's just a different shade of blue that was called for a little bit of a paler shade. And I opted, um, when I was doing my floss toss, that color was disappearing into the fabric. And so I did change it to a different shade of DMC, but it was just a different shade of blue. Um, the other thing that I ran into is that any of like the white daisies or the white bee wings um, that are stitched just because of the modeling and, and some of the lighter tones in the fabric that I chose to use in places, they, those kind of those stitches were just disappearing a bit. So I did do a pale gray back stitch on those that was not called for in the chart. But otherwise, this is just as called for. Um, and I'm really, really pleased with it. Um, so I do have, there is a companion chart that, that goes um, along with this that I have. I'm not planning to stitch that this year. So what I think I will do is order, it's the, the same dimensions, same stitch count. So I think I'll order two of the exact same frames and go ahead and get this one framed up. And then I'll have the matching frame for the companion piece when I stitch it probably next year. But anyway, for now, that is my finish on Honey Fields by Filigram. Huh. 
I just discovered a couple of missing back stitches, so we'll get that fixed. <laughs> okay, next whip I have to show you is my travel stitching. So you might remember the last time we filmed, I didn't actually show this to you because I hadn't worked on it. Um, and I haven't worked on it a whole lot, to be honest, but I've done enough now that, um, that I feel like I can actually show you some progress on it. So the last time you saw this was well before Thanksgiving. Well, it was just before Thanksgiving, actually, I think. And um, I had finished stitching and filling in the roof of the church. I had stitched most of the Silent Night, Holy Night, the, the letters, um, and had finished stitching in one of the trees that's, that's uh, beside the church. And so this is where I am right now. As you can see, I've put in more snowflakes up here. I've finished the letters and um, I have started, I've started stitching and filling in the church, the side, this side of the church, finished this window, started on the door and another window and have stitched in the branches of this tree and started putting in the snow on the ground here. Um, so this is coming along, uh, still quite a bit of work to do. It's not gonna be finished anytime soon. But, um, but I'm pleased with where I am on it, all things considered. Um, I don't know when it's gonna come out again. Hopefully it will in the next couple of weeks, but, um, but it'll get done when it gets done and I'm happy with where it is right now. Um, sorry, it's pretty wrinkly, but it is what it is. It's been sitting in a project bag. So there we go. Oh, all right. Uh, next whip I'm going to share with you is Gary's. Um, Gary is working on Captain America by Awesome Pattern Studio. That is a shop on Etsy, and he is stitching this on a piece of 16 count pewter Ada with the DMC, the called for DMC. So Gary, I will uh, let you kind of take over and talk about your piece. Well, the last time <clears throat> that you saw it, I didn't really do too much in between the two. Mostly because I just didn't do too much uh, in between the two. Um, I filled in a little bit more of the purple, and then there were like a bunch of spots right above there in that area, and those were uh, those were filled in. Um, but on this one, I've actually um, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm laughing because she's holding that up, but right now there's a graphic up that can't see her. <laughs> At any rate, um, <laughs> I'm holding it anyway. Uh, here's where I am now. Um, one of the things, if you look off to the left, you'll see the, um, there's some gray there, which seems to be the same color as the background. So it, when you put it down, it looks like water spots. You know, I, I thought like I spilled something on it a couple of times, but I didn't. Um, and as I was saying in each of the videos so far, this one is fairly complicated, at least for me. Um, and Amy tried to talk me into this before, but I didn't listen. Uh, and she showed me that if you fill in the spots on the chart where you, you sewed, <laughs> is that a word, where you had sewn, um, <laughs> um, then you can actually easily find where you left off. And that was one of the challenges I had because I wasn't marking it off and I had to find where I had left off and go from there. But I don't have that problem anymore. It's still complicated, but that much has been um, pulled, uh, pulled from it. But at any rate, I'm not sure it's probably going to, Probably between now and uh, the next time we film, will be uh, I'll probably finish. It comes in four pages, upper right, you know, uh, upper left, the and then the two bottoms. That's the upper uh, right, yeah, upper left rather. Anyway, that, it's the upper corner one, uh, and that should be done. That corner should be done by the next time that we film. Speaking of which, uh, we had a comment that was wondering why we um why there's a delay uh in between the time that we broadcast a lot of it has to do with me because i do a lot of editing i could do all of the editing right away um, and i could get the videos out but right now we're on a two-week release schedule so sometimes we go beyond that depending on what's taking place but generally speaking we probably won't release anything um sooner than every two weeks what I will try to do, though, is stick to the every two weeks, even though, you know, stuff happens like you, you fly away and you don't have a laptop. Um, but um, we'll try to stick to that. But 
Um, there's a lot of editing that we do to these. Uh, every picture that you see of all of the, of all of the, every picture that you see, really, I took. I don't. It it doesn't pay to go to the <laughs> the sites and download images, so I just go out and take what I want. So I edit those. I edit the video. Um, the audio is also an issue because I have to pull the audio from this camera. That's me, which sounds horrible, but I have to make it sound somewhat decent. Anyway, there's a lot of editing involved uh, in this. And I would say there's a good four or five days of editing. So with that said, I'll try to stick with, uh, you know, at least a two week schedule. Um, but I don't, I don't see it happening any quicker than that because I do have to, I have to do other things. Um, and the biggest point of all is we're not getting anything for this. Uh, we're not getting any money. Um, and it's not that we want the money. I enjoy doing it. Well, we want the money, obviously, but, um, <laughs> I enjoy doing this. Uh, she enjoys doing this. So that's why we're doing it, but we really, we don't get paid at all. And, uh, what, what we're thinking about was if somebody asked maybe if we could do a behind the scenes, um, because it takes me about just as another point of information, uh, it takes me Depending on how things are, it could take me anywhere from an hour to two or maybe even three hours just to set everything up um, so that we can record. I got one camera here, one camera there. There's uh, five lights. I think six eyes. There's six lights. Um, there's one mic, which again, I'll get to the audio later. I'll, I'll mic myself, I guess. But at any rate, that's why. It's because there's a lot to this and we both have other stuff that we have to do um, it's, it's equally as important. So maybe this one has fallen off a bit more than we should have let it, but we'll, we'll address that moving forward. So I hope that, uh, I hope that answers your question. <laughs> yeah, I think that was well, well done. Um, and I think the only thing I <laughs> could shock you, <laughs> awkward. Uh, no, I think the only other thing I would add to that is what I think a lot of folks don't realize is that Gary does digital media, photo and video and production. That's what he does professionally. Um, and so the editing work that has to go in to, you know, all of these different pieces um, to put a video together, it, there's just there's a lot of behind the scenes and all these other components that go into it that don't go into your typical floss tube video. And so he, he has to fit in the work that he does on these videos around the other things, the other projects that he has for his business and that he has professionally. And so um, obviously anytime you're dealing with uh, your, your profession versus what you do on your side time, your profession kind of has to take priority. And so um, I think that's another piece of that puzzle that he's kind of got to work around that. But um, yeah, I know, I know folks are used to a floss tube video. A lot of times people will film it and post it the same day or post it within 24 hours if they've got some edits to do to it. But these videos tend to be a little bit more heavily edited. And so that's why. Um, but thank you for the question. I think that's probably a question that a lot of folks have had over, um, over the course of watching our videos. And so I think it's a good one for us to let folks know about. Okay, so we have one more whip to show you today before we move along, and that is my full coverage project. Um, I've spent the last week working on Rose Trellis In by Heaven and Earth Designs. I am stitching this on a piece of 28 count white Lugana, two over one, using a combination of tent stitch and continent, no, continental tent stitch and half stitch. Um, so the last time you saw this, um, I had, I was about, I think halfway across, a little over halfway across. So there's uh, like a center um, tower in the inn, not a center, but there's like a tower in the inn and it's, I'm in like the middle section of that tower. And I was in also in the middle of, there's like this cornice that goes across the top. And so I was kind of halfway through stitching that and I had started, you could see sort of the, um, the curve of the window in that part of the tower starting to show up. Um, and so this time around, I'm so excited with the progress that I made. I was just, this is what ha this is what being on vacation will do for you. I, I stitched about 4,500 stitches on this last week and it was 4,500 stitches of pretty heavy confetti and pretty in most of the spots. Um, 
And I'm super excited with what I got accomplished. I also hit a pretty big milestone where I am now officially over 40% finished. I'm at 42 point something percent um, and over 90,000 stitches done. So this is where we are now. You guys, can you believe how much I got done? I'm so thrilled with this. So I got all the way atop, uh, across the top of this white trim work started working in this roof section over here and even somewhat in this window. Um, I got quite a bit, I'd say 75% of the pink siding in that section of the tower kind of done. The window is, is almost finished as well. Um, and the other thing that I was really excited about getting to is a new element in the design and that is a person. Um, so in this window, it's still being stitched, so it's not entirely clear what it is, but there's a woman who is dusting in, um, in the window. And um, you can kind of, I can already kind of see her features emerging. I'm really interested to see how well she shows up next time. Um, just, I think because of the number of stitches that you have to work with, some of the detail, obviously, you know, it gets a little bit blobby. You know, one of the things that's interesting is you may have noticed Throughout the design, there's these little like kind of balls of light. Um, they look like will of the wisps, and I always thought they were. And then I was recently looking at the original artwork for this design, um, not the mock-up, and I realized that these little trailing wispy things that I always thought were will of the wisps were actually like little fairies with wings. Um, and it does not translate like translate like that at all into the stitched piece, just because you don't have enough stitches to get that level of detail. Um, and I have a feeling that my, you know, as the people begin showing up in this design, they're probably gonna be a little bit blobby, um, but I'm curious to see how blobby they are versus how much detail, and if you can actually tell it's a woman dusting or if you can just tell there's a person in the window. So we'll see. Regardless, um, I'm so excited with how this is coming on. I really love it. Um, I think it's just absolutely beautiful. And um, this is, I'm just, yeah, I'm so, so delighted with how this is coming on. And I did a quick look at where I was this time last year with it. And boy, if you don't think you're making any progress, um, it's good to have those records uh, of where you were prior um, to show you just really how much work you've accomplished. So that's that. Okay, so we have a little bit of haul to share with you. Um, obviously Christmas means haul. So I think first of all, Bear and Sophie wanted us to be sure to tell you that they were very good and Santa was very good to them this year. So they both had full Christmas stockings on Christmas morning. Uh, they got festive dinosaurs, festive T-Rex dinosaurs that they've been enjoying. So um, now that we've shared their little goodies with you, I will share mine because I got spoiled by both Gary and my parents this year for Christmas. Um, so the first thing I wanted to show you, I'm not showing you the whole set, but Gary got me a set of hoops that I've seen some other floss tubers recommend. And um, I had I have not stitched with a hoop in over 20 years. I can't remember the last time I stitched with a hoop. Um, and once I moved into Q-snaps, I never looked back. But um, these have come highly recommended by a number of other floss tubers and I was, I I thought I'd give them a try. So I put them on my wish list. And so Gary got me a set and um, I gave them, I've tried them out once or twice now and I really like them. They hold the fabric really taut um, and it's nice because it's a nice thin profile. So it's a lot easier to grip. Um, sometimes a Q-snap, my wrist will get a little bit weary, especially if I have to have larger than an eight by eight. Um, and so this has been really great so far and I'm really liking it. So thank you to Gary for that. Um, and then I got some new charts. So um, looking, I'm excited to share these with you. So the first one I got was Blackberry House by Plum Street Samplers. This was from my parents. This was entirely enabled by Elizabeth Ann Kinstitch. Um, when I saw her finish version of this earlier, or back in 2021, um, I was just blown away. It was so beautiful. And I was like that I have to stitch and I have to stitch it soon. So I put it on my wish list. My mom and dad got this for me and my dad liked it enough. Um, some of you know, my dad is also a stitcher. He liked it enough that when I opened this Christmas on Christmas, he kind of hemmed and hawed and hinted that he would like to have a copy of this. So he might get this for his birthday. 
Um, he also kind of hinted that this would be fun to stitch together. So we'll see if we can organize something there. Um, but I love this chart. Uh, I also, from Gary, got The Gather In by Plum Street Samplers. This is another one that's been on my wish list. Um, so this was a retreat exclusive at, I think it was the Fall Fling that Acorns and Threads did in 2020. And this was one of those charts that I was like, when this is released to the general public, I want it. So it's, it went onto my wish list right away and Gary got this for me for Christmas. So I'm excited to stitch this one. Um, I also got, uh, Gary got me It's Spring Fever by Blackbird. This is an older Blackbird chart, but it's one of the few that has more of kind of the, the blue tones to it. And I really like those, the ones that Blackbird does with the blues. And so this one is really beautiful. Really love that and excited to do that one. And then finally, this is one that I'm just obsessed with um, to the point that I am already kind of rethinking how to potentially fit it in somewhere into my stitching this year because I love it so much. Gary got me Joyful Song by Samplers Not Forgotten. I don't know. I mean, it's like everything about this. It's the peachy pinks, the hearts, the birds. Everything about this is so, so beautiful. And I love it so much. I cannot wait to stitch it. It's just gorgeous. So it was a lot of good stitchy stuff for Christmas and I'm really happy about that. Um, the next thing I wanna share with you is a promotion. And so this is something we don't typically do on our videos, but a couple of months ago, um, I got a message from Ivy at Molly Ollie and she asked me if I would be interested in receiving a sample product um, from Molly Ollie and talking about it on one of my videos. And like I said, we don't typically do a lot of promotions because that's not what we're really here to do. Um, uh, but in this case, I thought, yeah, I'll do that. I'll give it a try. And so um, so they sent this to me uh, several weeks ago now, I wanna say about a month ago. And um, this is called the Mimo Caddy. Um, and actually, let me just pull it up and let you see this. Um, so, what I like about this, you can kind of tell from the, the design of it that it was, and I think the original concept and design of this was really kind of to be a diaper caddy, but it actually works so, so well for crafting. Um, uh, that's just an alternate use for it. And that's what it's been really helpful for me. <clears throat> <laughs> you okay over there? I was just thinking that uh, as you get older, it'll have a dual purpose. That's right. <clears throat> I can keep my crafting and my... And your diapers. And my diapers all in one in spot. Spa. It's perfect. Um, mm. Yeah. No, I really like this. This has, it's really good quality, really great workmanship. Um, it's nice and soft. Uh, the manufacturer, this is all chemical free. Um, and it is a, a small business. Um, and I like it, it also holds its shape really well, even when it's not like filled out with all of the stuff that I have in it. So really nice. It's also really thoughtfully designed. Um, it's got great little pockets and Velcro kind of walls inside the main area here. So you can kind of, you've got a lot of versatility as far as how you use the space on the inside and, and how you separate or don't separate that based on how you wanna use it. So that's really nice. Um, it's also got like a zippered pocket on this side and then little pockets of differing sizes all around the other sides. So you can slip little bits and pieces of things in there. Um, and so I wanted to share this with you. Um, we'll include a link in the description box below. Again, this is the Mimo Caddy by Molly Ollie. It's available on Amazon. Um, I believe it's a really quite a reasonable price, especially for the quality that you get with this. Um, but I was telling you earlier that one of the things I've been doing um, is kind of reorganizing my crafting supplies and my crafting space because I don't have kind of a central location for everything. And so when I get ready to frame something or finish something into a pillow um, or do any kind of crafting at all, I'm kind of gathering bits and pieces from all over the place. Um, and it just kind of makes it the, the process less enjoyable. Um, and so this, for especially considering it's not huge, it has a lot of capacity. And so how I've chosen to use mine, I have one compartment that I've set apart for some of my finishing fabric. This is not all of my finishing fabric, but it's a good percentage of it. 
Granted, if you're a quilter or you're somebody who has mountains of fabric, this is probably not gonna do it for your fabric. But for somebody like me who's got kind of a limited fabric stash, this is perfect for being able to kind of keep all of that or most of that in one place. Um, I've got another compartment here where I've got like my finishing trims and some, um, you know, uh, my my um, my lady dot trims and and kind of some finishing supplies there, some ribbons and and things like that. Um, so that's really great. And then over here, I've got a whole section where I'm able to keep my framing supplies. So I've got my point driver and some sticky tape and my, my um, some scissors and you know all these other little things. And then, like I said, I've got all these little pockets around the outside where I can keep things like buttons or covered button kits, charms and safety pins, like my vintage safety pins. And in this pocket, I'm able to keep some of my like other small things that would easily, you know, could easily fall out and get lost. So um, some threads and um, some other stuff like that. And so this has just been so useful for keeping all of those little bits and bobs and odds and ends that you kind of need to pull together and use for your crafting. And I've still got space where I could throw in like my, um, my, um, like my tacky glue and my hot glue gun and some other things that are still gonna get put in here. But it's been so nice since I've had this to be able to just, when I'm ready to do something, whether it's, you know, like a couple of the pieces that I have had, that I've framed in the last month or so, grab my little, my little um, caddy here and go to town. And I'm not having to grab from all these different places. It's all in one spot. It's compact. It's tidy. Um, I know it comes in a couple of different color options. I liked the, um, the aqua and gray. I thought that was really pretty. So like I said, we'll include a link into the description box below, but if you are looking for some organizational solutions, this is, um, this is a fantastic option and I would really encourage you to check it out. Um, it's been really fun to kind of figure out how I wanted to work with this and how to use it in an effective way. And it's, I'm thoroughly pleased with it. Okay. So I think that kind of does it for us. We're gonna wrap up by just talking about what we're gonna be working on for the next couple of weeks before we come back to update you. Uh, so the first thing is I'm gonna spend a week on my Floralia sampler. Um, and I'm really excited to get back to that one. I will be pushing to finish page three and that will be that will put me at the entire top half or the, the 50 percent over 50 percent mark of completion. So really looking forward to working um, on that design. Then after I work on that, I will be getting back to my fancy lady, which is Royal Holiday. Um, and as many of you know, I am doing that as a stitch along with um, Sarah, the stitch addict on Instagram, and then Lynn, the Lancashire stitcher. We have also, it's been really fun. I think a lot of folks had been kind of waiting to start that design during the holidays or around the new year because we've had some folks that have joined the sal recently. Uh, and so I'm so excited to see a few new folks jumping in. So in our last video, I mentioned that Nancy Duquette had, um, had also started her piece recently. And then um, the Scottish stitcher has started stitching on this. And then also we have a gentleman who is in the mix now and that's Andreas Schweigart. Um, so it's you the man, Andreas. Yes, <laughs> I'm not doing that. <laughs> you the man. Yes. <laughs> so um, if you love this chart, if you have it in your stash, if you've been thinking about doing it for a while, what better time than to jump into the pool with all the other folks that are just getting this started, um, so we can watch your progress and cheer you on. It's been really fun to see people updating Instagram as they're getting going on this. So. Um, I will spend some time working on that as well over the next couple of weeks and hopefully we'll get some time to put into my um, my Country Cottage Needleworks Silent Night um, that is, is not loved as much as it deserves to be. Um, and then finally, Gary will continue to plug away on Captain America and as he already said, he's going to be trying to get that top page finished um, that he's been working on. There's only three stitches left. <laughs> <laughs> still it's still questionable whether he's gonna do it you should be able to get it <laughs> yeah. so that is it for us today thank you so much for coming to spend time with us we really appreciate those of you that come back um, video after video to hang out with us um, and leave comments we really appreciate it if you are new here um, 
belatedly, I should have said this at the top of the video, but welcome. We're so glad you came to check out the video. We're so glad that you decided to see what we're doing here. We hope you liked it. And um, if so, we encourage you, if you haven't already, hit the little um, the little bell notification so that you, you get a heads up when we post a new video. We hope you'll subscribe. Um, you're always welcome to send us an email between videos at globetrottingstitcher at gmail.com. Um, and you can follow my progress between videos at um, globetrotting underscore stitcher on Instagram. So that having been said, um, stay well and safe, keep stitching, and um, happy 2022 to you. I really hope that this next year holds much better things for all of us um, than 2021 did. Um, so take care. Bye-bye.